If you are afraid of public speaking, you are not alone. In this video, I will be exploring the reasons behind our fears of doing presentations and give you some ways to help improve your presentational skills. So let's get started. Presentations are a key part of secondary and university education, and this also extends to your future careers. Unfortunately, 75-90% to of people report that they have glossophobia, which is the scientific name for the fear of public speaking. Feeling anxious about presentations is perfectly normal, but we do need to learn to limit its effects in order to put on the best presentation. One of the key factors that lead to anxiety is the audience that you are presenting to. There are two factors, density and familiarity. Density is referring to the amount of people, and the more people there are, the more stressed out you'll be. Familiarity is referring to how much you know the audience. If the audience are people that you know, like your friends and family, you'll be less stressed out. Now that we know the two factors regarding audience, let's figure out ways to help alleviate the problem. For density, you can't really control how many people there are in your audience, so the only way to help lessen the effects of density is to practice in front of a smaller crowd before easing into a larger audience. As for familiarity, we should utilize the mere exposure effect. This effect states that the more you see or hear something, the more you'll like it. By going into the audience and talking to them prior to your presentation, the audience will feel a stronger connection with you and you will feel more secure as a result. Let's move on from audience. Another factor that leads to anxiety is your perceived ability as a presenter. The key thing to point out here is that anxiety is not caused by lack of skill and is instead caused by you thinking that you're not skilled enough. That means that no matter how good you are at presenting, if you don't believe that you're good, you will always feel anxious. Although it might sound intuitive that with skill, you will believe that you have skill, the imposter syndrome actually begs to differ. The imposter syndrome is when a person believes that all their success is only caused by luck and not their own skill. That becomes quite a problem since people with imposter syndrome will feel anxious despite lots of experience and actual presentational skills. It is not easy to deal with imposter syndrome, but experts tend to believe that the most important step to take is to acknowledge that you have imposter syndrome and tell yourself that these beliefs are hindering your abilities. It is also helpful to share these feelings to close friends and family as they can reassure you that you are skillful which will help increase your own confidence. In contrast to the imposter syndrome, there is the Dunning-Kruger effect. This effect states that people that are not skilled at a particular field may overestimate their own ability. This is caused by a lack of self-awareness, which prevents them from accurately assessing their own skill level. This effect is a double-edged sword. Let's first look at the good side. Since you overestimate your own abilities, you are likely to believe that you are very skilled at presenting, and therefore you will have high confidence and less likely to have stage fright. However, along with these benefits, there are also many downsides. The lack of ability that causes the Dunning-Kruger effect means that your presentation will likely not be very good. However, the biggest problem here is that since you lack the self-awareness to realize that you need to improve your skills, it is unlikely for you to learn from your mistakes and grow as a presenter. Combining all of these factors together, it is clear that the Dunning-Kruger effect is overwhelmingly more negative than positive. So when you are preparing for your presentation, you should keep in mind that the Dunning-Kruger effect and the imposter syndrome is a thing, and make sure you try your best to acknowledge their existence and remind yourself to view your work in an objective way. Lastly, the thing that people fear the most is lethologica, which is forgetting what to say. This is normal, since no one wants to be humiliated. However, the problem starts when people try to solve this problem by memorizing everything that they are going to say as hard as they can. This might seem intuitive, but it is actually not a very good way to approach this problem. For one, when you are presenting, it is likely that your nerves will make it hard for you to recall the speech that you have diligently prepared. Furthermore, if you accidentally skip the line, it can make you lose your footing and unsure of how to continue. So how should we tackle this problem? Well, according to experts, you should have a roadmap on how your presentation should go and have key points along the way to help guide your presentation. By doing this, the things that you need to hard memorize are a lot less, and your presentation can sound a lot more natural, since you are not just spitting out a script. Okay, assuming you are able to avoid all of the problems above, and you are able to stay calm when presenting. 
Now it's time to make fine-tuned changes to elevate your presentation from good to outstanding. The first thing to keep in mind is the volume that you're presenting with. No matter how good your content is, if no one can hear you, it does not matter. You need to find the appropriate volume for your environment. If you are presenting in a small classroom, you will need to talk slightly louder than usual. In contrast, if you are presenting on a huge stage, you will really want to project your voice and breathe through the diaphragm. With the appropriate volume, you can project your confidence to your audience, which will make them enjoy your presentation even more. Speaking of the diaphragm, let's talk about breathing. Diaphragmic breathing has many benefits. For one, you can breathe slower, which slows down your heartbeat and reduces your nervousness. Furthermore, breathing through the diaphragm can also make it easier for you to project your voice farther. Finally, let's talk about eye contact. When performing eye contact, you should find friendly faces around the room to make eye contact with. This can not only help calm yourself, but it also makes the audience psychologically more inclined to pay attention to you, which helps you better deliver your message. In conclusion, there are many ways to help combat our fears of presentation. Utilizing the mere exposure effect to better connect with our audience, while keeping the imposter syndrome and the Dunning-Kruger effect in mind can go a long way. Coupled with the best way to memorize your presentation and with some fine-tuned changes like volume, diaphragmic breathing, and eye contact, you will be able to perform a great presentation. And that's the end of this video, and if you found this video helpful, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.